Animated shows are mediums for infinite creation. This is a statement I've been pondering for a, f for a few weeks as I read a new script. It was good, but what it lacked was content. There just wasn't enough, and it was here that I realized how much effort writers go to to create animated cartoons. This made me think of shows that stand the test of time, and it brought me to Adventure Time. If you don't already know, Adventure Time was created by Pendleton Ward in mid-2010 with the intention of creating a show that could entertain but spend many seasons. And that is exactly what it did. The show lasted 8 years, which from my knowledge is the second longest lasting Cartoon Network show, just behind Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I have a deep passion for this show as it was basically my childhood, waking up on Saturday mornings just to watch an episode that was long past due. And very recently, I watched all 10 seasons, which doesn't sound like much, but in actuality is 238 episodes, about 5 miniseries, and one banger of an ending. So to give the show the burial it deserves, I'm covering every season of the show, a grueling task that's going to take a very long time, but hey, it's content, am I right? One episode for each season with shorter, more brief episodes for the miniseries like Marceline the Vampire Queen, all of the Fiona and Cake adventures, and all the Christmas specials. Completion of each episode will take a long time, but the payoff is worth it, I promise. So without further ado... Episodes 1 through 4 aren't really anything special, they're mainly just here to establish characters, their relationship, and the way they combat specific situations. Through their actions we learn Finn likes Pinterest Bubblegum, Finn and Jake are best friends, Jake and Lady Rainicorn like each other, and Ice King has a weird obsession with stealing princesses, but a particular liking for Princess Bubblegum. Other characters that will become more important are characters like Tree Chunks, Lumpy Space Princess, and the Mega Chad Starchy. Now, you can argue those four episodes are cool, but this episode, episode number five, is where the boys become slightly bigger boys, and then they become men with the introduction of Adventure Time's most important items, the Enchiridion. As the series progresses, I'm going to be placing more significant items on this lovely edited fireplace mantle, so I'm just, yep, just, yep, yep, no, more, more to the left, yeah, right, right there. Cool. So, what's the deal with the Enchiridion? I hear your cheeto-ridden fingers typing. Well, it's a book that Finn gains in the fifth episode of the series and is used many, many times. It's, supposed, it's supposedly a source of infinite knowledge and is given much more significance, so keep it in your head for the time being. Trust me when I say it's going to become vital for world building. Now I know it's hard to believe, but episodes 9 all the way to 26 are very similar from the start of the season. These episodes are all the first season really needs, just more establishment of characters, really. Marceline, Nepta, or never ending, Pi Throne Robot, and, and Magic Man. Again, remember a lot of these characters as they will become more important later on. So, what does the first season of a show need? Well, it's kind of hard to summarize it in two points, but I believe all it needs is world building and characters. Nothing too much to spoil a second season, but enough to want you to learn more about the show. World, be world building is given to us right off the bat. I spoke about this briefly for the business time episode bit, but I think I need to expand on a little bit more. So what are the signs of world building are we given in the show? Well, quite a lot, frankly. Firstly, Finn and Jake. How did they become brothers? How are they brothers? Later in the show, they attempt to give us an explanation that Jake's mother and father adopt him in the woods, but eventually we learn this is not the case. Another interesting idea the show gives us is how the world came to be. In shows like Clarence, everyone was human. Even something like Bojack Horseman had diversity between both animals and human culture. But then we come back to Adventure Time. What's the deal with all these kind of creatures? There are humans, candy people, penguins, ice people, fire people, slime people, lumpy people, animals, bugs, monsters, and robots. Let's take the 13th episode, for example, City of Thieves. So many things are shown which leave a lot of unanswered questions. Like, where did the city come from? Who are those people? Where did that giant turtle come from? 
Great questions with no answers because they need no answer, as it expands the world in its own sense. You may have seen in the title, I called this video Establishment, but I haven't really mentioned it up until now. So how does Adventure Time establish characters? They keep them simple. Nothing too over the top, like how exaggerated the characters in Teen Titans Go are. In fact, let's actually compare these two shows to see how Adventure Time did a much better job keeping characters straightforward. We'll use Finn and Robin as our examples. We'll start with Finn. From this season alone, we can tell he's only human, with a good heart and a compassion to do what he's best at, saving princesses with his best friend and brother Jake. This is exemplified through his actions and the way he acts. When slaying a foe, he doesn't do anything unnatural or undoable from normal human capacity. Just like any other normal person, he struggles from fear as well. Take the episode Ocean of Fear for example, as not only one of the funniest episodes in the show and spawned one of these many great faces, it also demonstrates Finn's limits and how willing he is to accomplish certain tasks. Also his dialogue is annoying and it's very well delivered for a young actor. Jeremy Sharder did an incredible job portraying his emotions, which is something a lot of young people usually aren't willing to do. It's almost as if the voice actor is a mirror of Finn. Now we get to the ugly, the bad, the Teen Titans Go. Robin isn't a bad premise for a character, it's Teen Titans Go, but rewritten for a younger audience. But it's so poorly delivered. The writers barely worked on the original show and have little to no experience with it. This quote from an interview is more than enough. Did you guys in any capacity work on the old show, or are you totally new? No. I was a Warner Bros at the time the show was being made. I was sort of into the vibe, and all I knew was the guys working on it. I think part of the reason why we're working on the show is specifically because we weren't associated with the old one. I think anyone on the old show probably would have been a little bit more reverent to that than we would be. They probably were trying to make more or less the same version, but it's a great version. There's nothing wrong with the old show, in fact it's arguably better than ours, right? So instead of Finn, Robin is given almost no character. From watching the first season of Adventure Time and the first season of Teen Titans Go, what can you really tell about Robin when his attitude and specific situations change so often? And saying that Robin's character is the leader, strong type with no powers, is the most bland cookie cutter thing I've seen online today. And you can't even say that Teen Titans Go didn't have the, the resources necessary to flesh out a character when the first season of Teen Titans Go had double the amount of episodes Adventure Time did and they had almost the exact same amount of writers. And it isn't even like the voice actor was that bad, as they used the exact same Robin from the original. Needless to say, Adventure Time wins this round of Adventure Time versus a Cartoon Network show that kind of sucks. In a world with many characters, I believe that forming bonds between them is a very important thing writers should strive for. Typically, writers will try to accomplish this task by putting characters in situations which, for which force them to interact and dialogue. For example, in Adventure Time, forced speech to create dialogue can be seen as early as the first episode when Finn and Bubblegum are left alone in the graveyard, or when Finn and Jake are stranded in episode 12, Evicted. And can we just talk about that song they play in Evicted for a second? It's a jam, and it was actually sung by Pendleton Watt, the writer himself, and Olivia Olsen, who voices Marceline. This is the first of many songs that become very prominent in Adventure Time's story progression. Anyway, back to relationship. One more example of incredible shifts in character behavior is through episode 9, my two favorite people. In it, Jake struggles to choose between spending time with Finn, his best friend, or later Radicorn, his girlfriend. To compromise, he hangs out with both of them, but they eventually gain a bond that Jake can't cope with, and he becomes jealous. This puts him at a moral discomfort, so he tries to fight fire with fire and make Finn jealous of Jake by using Tiffany, another new character, as a way of making Finn more uncomfortable, claiming that Tiffany is his new best friend. 
In the end, Jake realizes that it's okay to be jealous and that the connections people make will sometimes outweigh their own, but that's okay. In conclusion, Adventure Time Season 1 is the embodiment of establishment. Establishment of characters, establishment of relationship, and establishment of plot. Next up is Season 2, which has some interesting themes that we're going to talk about, so stay tuned and subscribe! <laughs>